rumor has it, rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I am gossiping. This is the Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Right. right. On The Breakfast Club. Now, we got to talk about this young lady named Tierra Young Allen. She was detained out in Dubai. She was uh, taking a vacay over there, and she was charged with screaming in public. The trip turned terrifying for Tierra Young Allen when her mom says she was a passenger in a friend's rental car and they got into an accident there in Dubai. Tina Baxter says when her daughter went to the company to retrieve her ID, credit card and other items left in the rental, Baxter says it did not go well. She found out that she could only receive those items if she paid an undisclosed amount of money. Um, she dealt with a very ag- aggressive individual, a young man there who was screaming at her. Baxter says her 29-year-old daughter ultimately yelled back at the rental car agent, she says resulting in her being charged for screaming there in Dubai. Her passport has been taken and her mom says she's been placed under a travel ban pending the outcome of the investigation. I've never been to Dubai, but I know I don't plan to play in Dubai at all. Cause mm-hmm. uh, I remember what, what was the DJ name who got arrested for Future? Future that, that Eskimo. spawned the fifty six. Oh, yeah, Eskimo. Esco. I said Eskimo. Esco. 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 Shout out to Esco. And um, you know, Steve Harvey goes to Dubai a lot, and he says it all the time. Don't you? Don't y'all play when y'all come out here now? No, I've been okay. to Dubai several times, and uh, I actually took the whole family out to Dubai. But yeah, it's one of those places where you don't play. They don't play drugs, so if yeah. you if you if you have your edibles or your marijuana, you're going to jail. No, Steve Harvey told me, he told me they, you will disappear. No, you will. When you come out here with well, drugs, you will disappear. They're a bunch of Judge Judy's in Dubai. They yeah, don't play. Right. Yeah, they don't play. They have their own rules, their own regulations. So you when you you know when you go to other places, other countries, you have to know the laws. Uh, it's sad though because nobody should be arrested for raising her voice. You know, what yeah, I mean? that's she's, right. she's been locked up for what two months now, almost that's three months, crazy. which is insane. I'm sure it's because she's a woman though. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, that's what he said. Because a woman raised their voice. Yeah, yeah, so, right. did they give her a release date or anything? Or the family's trying to get as much information as possible. I don't think they're they're really uh, giving out any information at this time. Mm. Well, which free is very her. Sad. All right, now we got to jump to fabulous. Definitely free her. That is somebody you can say free. Yes. <laughs> right, free and her. That's right. A lot of people we yell free for. I'm not too sure if they should be free or not. But that's somebody <laughs> I can say that is that seems very unjust. And uh, and the mom said that the gentleman uh, allegedly raised his voice, so she was matching his energy. But I guess over there, if a woman raises her voice in public, she can go to jail, which is very sad. Now, fabulous. Uh, he's uh, people have been talking about something that fabulous posted yesterday. Fab said, I I love hearing of female rappers talking some real ish. Women are so strong, have so many stories and perspectives that we need to hear in pure form. No disrespect to any female rappers out there, but I think there's only one style of female rap slash hip hop being promoted, programmed and looked as successful now. Mm. I so disagree with it. Well, I mean, I, I disagree with the point that he's trying to make saying it's only one that's popular because you have artists like Rhapsody and that's like right. she's amazing. But y'all, then people not, they're not saying turn this up in the club. But if you play mm-hmm. like JT just dropped a new song, that's going up. So mm-hmm. I'm like, is, is he listening to those songs? I think he meant being prom- promoted like on, on these services, on radio and everything else. Because if you look at the, the, the top four songs that, that are female rappers, what, what songs are there is? It's Lotto. Yeah, we're talking about rappers. But Lotto and Cardi, they, they just rapping on they're that rapping. record. They're mm-hmm. ripping out the plastic. I mean, they just snapping. They, mm-hmm. you know? And what else? What other songs? Glorilla. Mm-hmm. Glorilla just snapping on her new record. And what else? Sexy Red. Mm-hmm. That's definitely Booty Hole Boss. <laughs> <laughs> Those are Booty Hole Boss. <laughs> <laughs> Those are definitely Booty one? Hole Any, Boss. Anyone else you could think of that's, that's pop? Ice Spice. And Ice Spice. Ice Spice got booty hole balls too. I don't know if people are being programmed to do this. I don't think ladies are being programmed to do this kind of music as much as folks are seeing what's working and they're doing that. Because the formula's not messed up. I don't think he's saying they're being programmed. I think they're saying that the, the labels are picking those songs and pushing those songs. Because I don't they, know. Because they see that's what's working. Yeah, because they see that's what's working. That's what people are listening to. That's what's streaming. Because that's what they follow. They follow the algorithms. But, mm-hmm. but you have women that can do both. Like, for example, uh, Ken the Man. Like, I, yeah. I, I heard her before, and when I heard her, to me, she had those kind of booty hole bars where it was just mm-hmm. all about, you know, sex and stuff. But then I heard her on the new... What's a booty hole bar, bro? When you're just rapping about your booty hole. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one person that rapped around their booty hole. All, I, but to fabulous point, a lot of them do be sounding like they're rapping about their booty hole. Okay. But what I'm saying is I heard her on the new Humble Souls mixtape that Emery Jones did with Clue, and she got a song with Rhapsody called Love Answers, and she's snapping, mm-hmm. like snapping, snapping, dropping them Clue's mom to Kinder Man. I was like, damn, mm-hmm. I never heard her rap like that. And to Chris's point, I've been saying for the last four or five years, uh, my favorite rapper, period, 
male or female is Rhapsody. Mm -hmm. Not counting the young legends like the Kendricks and the Nipsey's, God bless the dead, but Rhapsody is definitely not one dimensional. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I think a lot of those women aren't one dimensional. I just think that those are the songs that they present to radio yeah. and streaming services because those are the songs it's, that work. It's selling. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not going to mess up your coins. Yeah, uh, and lastly, uh, people have been criticizing Drake for the last couple of years, actually, and Elliot Wilson has uh, said something yesterday that went kind of viral. He calls out Drake for only doing interviews outside of our culture. Now, this is after Drake sat down with TikTok star uh, Bobby Alfoff, I, I believe that's her name. That's the little, the, the young white girl that she was in the bed talking to Drake. And then she oh, also okay. did an interview with uh, Funny Marco. Uh, she has a podcast, it's called The Really Good Podcast. And he's saying that Drake doesn't really tap into our, our culture when it comes to those things, when it comes to these interviews. I disagree with that. I don't agree with that. I think Drake does a good job of doing both. Like he did the interview with the TikTok star, but he also did a sit down with Lil Yachty, Lil Yachty not culture. You know what I mean? Before that, the last conversation he had was with Rap Radar. Like Drake don't do a lot of conversations, period. But when mm -hmm. he does, it seems like he's doing them on, uh, you know, on platforms that he feels comfortable with. Like, like Lil Yachty's not culture. Definitely culture. Well, yeah. And then he, then he said this. He said, moment of clarity. No disrespect to Lil Boat. Yachty's convo with the boy was comfy exactly. and had some cool moments. I was more so clowning the comedy shenanigans with outsiders to our culture. It would be great to hear Drake speak to us again, even if it ain't me. Yeah, but think about how big Drake is. Drake isn't just the artist that uh, caters to one culture. Like, if you go to... When you, you're going to Drake's show tonight, yeah. right? Last Drake show I went to is when he was uh, with Future. I've Garden. never seen a more diverse audience than that. Very ever diverse. in my life. Not, so is he saying that Drake doesn't talk about black topics or he just doesn't do things on black platforms? I guess he's saying black platforms. Okay. But I will say this too. He's also biracial. Right. You know, so white man. side, gotta go talk to the TikTok <laughs> stuff. But I, but I also feel like, you know, uh, when an artist gets to a, a certain level, they don't want to deal with the BS no more. Yeah. I mean, we see it all the time. When an artist gets to a certain level and... Honestly, they can put out what they want to put out, how they want to put out. When's the last time you heard Beyonce do an interview? Never. Okay. Right. Well, she last... has, but it's been a long, long, long time. time. Long even, time. Even with Jay. Jay decides what Rihanna, platforms he Jay, wants to do. Not Rihanna decides what platforms she wants to I'm do. I'm not mad at And Drake told us a long time ago he wasn't going to be doing interviews. You know what I mean? And the, <laughs> and the first time he did pop up with a conversation, it was with Rap Radar. Right. So then he turned around and, what, a couple years later, he sits down with Lil Yachty. And now he sat down with the TikTok stuff. Yeah. Same thing with Diddy. Diddy only mm -hmm. does what he wants to do. Snoop only does what he wants to do. Remember Meek Mill came up here and he said he ain't doing no more interviews. I can't put Diddy and Snoop them in that category. Diddy and Snoop definitely talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. I can't put them in that category. Not really Diddy. I'm talking about Snoop the people does. who don't necessarily do have conversations publicly a lot. Mm -hmm. Drake is one of those people. All right. Well, that is But your... I did watch that some of that TikTok interview. And I, it, it was weird that why are you sitting with somebody who don't even know your music? It seems like. But that's she more, looks that's, so uninteresting. That's more of a, yeah. a it's, it's like a comedy, comedy thing. That's what it's I like, yeah, I it's like it's a, more comedy. I it was a sketch. Yeah, I don't think yeah. anybody thought it was serious. It's more comedy, like they, that that sarcasm, sarcasm comedy type of ish. Mm. All right, well that is your rumor report. Now uh, we got front page news coming up, but also we want to talk about this topic, so we want to get the phone lines going. 800-585-1051. We were asking how long into dating someone before you post them on social media. Now Chris Kalen's up here; she's our co-host. She says she ain't never posting y'all things on her social media. And we'll discuss. So we want to hear from you, women. 800-585-1051. Fellas, too. How long into dating someone before you post them on social media? Let's have this conversation. Front page news is next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.